Hi, I'm Joe Bagley, and you're watching VMware Throwdown. This is where I get to ask the questions no one else dare ask, and hopefully get the answers no one else dare say. Today I'm joined by Joe Bader. He's the co-founder of Kubernetes and works here at VMware now. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thanks for having me on, I think. I really don't know quite what I'm getting myself into here. Well, let's dive straight in. So the question that has been burning on my mind is, Kubernetes, you're the co-founder of it, but in three years' time, is it not just going to be something irrelevant buried down the stack below something much more interesting? Well, you know, that's what I thought like six years ago when we launched the thing. You never know exactly where this is going to go. But I'll return the question to you, Joe. Like, is virtualization still relevant? I mean, as long as you get a machine from an application developer's point of view, who cares if it's virtualized or not? That's a, re that's a really good response, Joe, I must say. You know, you're right. I mean, virtualization is still relevant, but everyone's telling us it's all about PaaS, right? So surely we should all be talking about Tanzu Application Server and Cloud Foundry. Well, I think, you know, we build these layers on top of each other and, you know, ultimately the old stuff doesn't go away. You still need it there when you need it. So I think we'll see Kubernetes sort of start to fade into the background a little bit as folks like VMware and others bring more opinionated frameworks on top. Developers only ever want to talk about namespaces. Do they really know what they're on about? Should we be exposing infrastructure to them at all? Well, at the end of the day, you know, developers want their world that they can work in. in Kubernetes, that ends up being a namespace. Uh, oftentimes in the cloud, it's an account or, you know, it's a project or something like that. And so really what we want to do is give them a slice of virtual infrastructure that they can control and that they can drive with an API and then just really get out of the way and let them do their thing. So most of the enterprise companies that I talk to actually don't even have developers. So why should these companies even care about Kubernetes? Because it can really solve a lot of problems for any application team, whether that be an application team that's adapting off the shelf software, whether you're running stuff that, you know, maybe you even lost the source code to, or whether you're building new apps from the ground up. So I saw the CNCF picture the other day, that one with like 5,000 logos on it. Is, is the whole ecosystem a mess right now? This is innovation and innovation is oftentimes messy. I personally would much rather see a thriving ecosystem with a lot of companies doing a lot of interesting things versus something that's clean and, you know, limited because we're going to see amazing things come out of that sort of messy, beautiful chaos. So what you're really saying is in three years time, Kubernetes will replace vCenter and no one will care about it anyway, right? I wouldn't count on that. I think vCenter is not going away anytime soon. But what we'll find, I think, is that Kubernetes will help to create a more direct connection between you know, the VI admins, the teams that are running the virtual infrastructure and the application teams where they really want this cloud native, API driven, self-service experience. I was listening to an analyst the other day, something I don't often do, I might add. Yeah, you don't want to do that. No, and, and they were saying something about Kubernetes doesn't give you portability. What's all that about? Well, I think there's different types of portability. I think from my point of view, Kubernetes really gives you portability across a couple of different dimensions. The first one, which is the ability to adapt applications from one platform to another with minimal changes. I don't think anybody's going to promise zero changes. But I think more important than that, it's a portability of skill sets. As you start training your developers, as you start training your applications and operation teams, are those skills that they're building portable from one environment to the other? So when I look across the clouds, I hear loads of different Kubernetes, like the all of those, like just KE with the letter in front of it, right? Depending on which cloud you're talking to. Is there any differentiation between those? Should I care? Well, I think it depends on really if you want to insulate yourself and deal with the messy realities that most enterprises deal with, where you have some on-prem, you have some in cloud A, some in cloud B, you made an acquisition and who knows what they're using, and you want to have a point of view where you can bring all those things together. Okay, great. Great, so now it's time for the bonus question. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Did you know that you have the exact same number of gold medals as the vast majority of people who've ever made it to the Olympics? Does that make you feel proud? Uh, yeah, I didn't even put in nearly as much effort as they did. So there you go. <laughs> it's been great fun talking to you today, Joe. Thank you so much for coming on VMware Throwdown. Thanks for having me on.